War had raged through all Aventasia. The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of divine fate. The artifact could fulfill every wish, and thus decide the war, for one side or the other. Led by warlock Monkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against them. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven princess from the Woodland Realm. And the Critter, a hairy creature from the Northlands, companion of the most brilliant of the heroes. Nate Bonnet who was supposed to spend the rest of his life at the side of an elven princess, who deserved a kingdom and all the riches in the world, who should stop wasting time talking about himself in the third person. Good. Good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer. Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. Nate, how's it going? Good, for now. Could it be that your spell didn't quite work out the way you planned? I did tell you there were certain risks involved. No big thing. So, now that we have a little time to kill, why don't you tell me a little something about yourself? Oh, right. Well, um, yes, I came into this world in an oasis in the Umzu Desert, and at that time, I was... Are you out of your ever-loving mind? Definitely not the time to reminisce. Then why did you ask? I could use some help here, Benny. Well, you did see what happened last time I cast a spell. Time to make up for it, then. Now shake a leg. Oh, I don't know. I might just end up making everything worse. Let me see. I'm accompanying tons of boulders in a plummet to certain painful death. My death! So just how do you think you could make things any worse? Worse? I could set the air on fire, or it could start smelling. Very bad. Can't you just stop time? Or wings! Give me wings! How about that? Oh, this is all terribly complicated. I really don't feel up to it today, Nate. Benny! Perhaps tomorrow? I really do need to think through what's happened today properly. You get me out of the mess you got us into right now! Please don't yell at me! I just can't take it anymore! Benny! Ah! The state he's in, we can forget about miracles. I gotta find something easy, something even he thinks he can do.
A flying carpet. Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Ugh. I'm sorry I criticized your work, Benny. And? And? And that I shook your lamp. And everything else. You meant well. Well, all right, then. I forgive you. What can I do for you? Carpet! Hmm. A flying carpet. Hmm. Shouldn't be too hard. Should I really dare? Am I really up to it? Yes! What the heck? Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. To move a character, just click anywhere in the scene, wherever your heart desires. Well done. If you left-click an object, then your character will perform an action determined by the context. Now click on that big lever. Robot has used the lever, as this seemed logical to him. Now click the lever with your right mouse button so that the robot looks at it rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That hatch over there, left click it. Little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Click on the hatch again using the left mouse button. First left click will allow you to look, the second to use. Why? Because after a player character has looked at something, the most logical thing to do next is use it. It's quite simple. Right-click when you want to look at something, left-click in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Left-click on the lever. Appears to be a new problem. Better take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gear cogs. Great work. Items you pick up will go into your inventory. To open and close your inventory, left-click the rucksack. To use an inventory item, left-click it and then left-click the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now the second gear.
Perfect. You better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then... Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially left-clicking the first object, and then, when you have this item on the cursor, you left-click the second object. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done! Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony of the castle and start the machine. Excellent. Now ready. One last tip of your idea. If you press the spacebar, all interesting objects in the scene will be displayed. Good luck with your adventures in the Book of Unwritten Tales 2. I'm worried about you. Oh, Mother. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No, you don't look well at all. Positively rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming, and look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the elf kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivo. Did you see that? She's locked me in! Yes, only what's best for me. She always says that. Hmm. 
Have you seen this prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love? Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. Ugh. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world, and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought... perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. Complete idiot. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the elf burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. Could you please move aside? I want to get into my jewellery box. Hmm, he doesn't listen to me anymore, since I almost caused him to be roasted by fireballs, decapitated by swords and eaten by monsters. Mother has permitted him to disregard any of my orders that go against her wishes. His interpretation of this can be liberal. Cheap Cheap survived our past adventure, even if he'll insist on exactly the opposite. He told everyone for months how he defended me from all the evils of the world and then only just escaped with his tail feathers intact. I've been sleeping badly of late and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. When Nate and the others lived here, Nate often made intimations that were to do with the bed. I don't know why, 
but I know Mother wasn't happy about it. She moved him to a guarded guest room at the other end of the castle. And Cheap Cheap was ordered never to leave my side. Cheap Cheap likes to look at his reflection. He strikes a pose and then tries to impress himself with it and succeeds most of the time. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but some flowers are my favourite. Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. I've seen much suffering, much evil and unkindness in the world out there, but it was exciting. It was alive. Here in the Elf Burrow, everything is so ordered, so perfect. So dull. One day's just like the next, and they just pass by endlessly. One can almost see the edge of the wood through the telescope, but I just can't leave the elf burrow. Mother would never forgive me, and there are so many dangers lurking out there. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. No, I'm not thirsty. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room, and then it's replaced and planted in the garden. A guard with a spear and shield, and like all elven figures, immaculate. An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. Mother's locked me in, as if I was 200 again. Since I secretly escaped from the elf burrow last year, she's taken to guarding me closer than ever before. The door's locked and can only be opened from the other side. I'll have to find another way down to the library. Hey, Cheep Cheep, I need the mirror. I only need it for a minute. Oh, he's not budging, and his pecs can be damn painful when he puts his mind to it. Cheep, cheep, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead? Don't say I never look after you. Pearls, precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. All the stuff I have to wear at official functions. If it were up to Mother, I would have trunkfuls of this stuff, and a wing of the castle would be my wardrobe. She just can't understand why Pa and I aren't into this sort of thing.
Cheep Cheep has eaten every last seed from the bowl. The plant would survive, I'm sure, but at the moment I don't need any more. Hey, cheap. Oh, missing your mirror? Well, sooner or later, you won't be able to stand it anymore. I'm not horrible. I just don't want to be locked in my room like a child. See you later. Hopefully I'll find a book on medicine in the library. Only how am I going to get down there? The door's locked and can only be opened from the... I'll have to find another way down to the library. Only when everything is always perfect, then isn't everything always the same? It may not be befitting of a princess, but this isn't the first time that I've climbed into the garden via the balcony, and it won't be the last. I, um, I'm just doing my morning exercises. I wasn't going to. <sighs> of course, I could just ignore him and climb down into the garden anyway. He would, however, make a beeline to Mother and tell on me, and who knows what the two of them would cook up for me next. It's an age-old game. I hide his mirror and he pretends that he doesn't care. But sooner or later, he'll get grumpy and I relent. Hmm. 
Hopefully I'll find a book on medicine in the library. Only how am I going to get down there? Pearls, precious stones, goodness knows what I could use. Fresh water from the spring brook. People come from far and wide to drink it. Okay, he's not looking this way. Oh, there is more than one kind of stretch exercise, you know. Perhaps you'd like to train with me. No chance. I can't sneak down as long as Cheap Cheap's on guard. The plant would survive, I'm sure, but at the moment I don't need any more. Withdrawal symptoms. I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. Shh. He... He's gone to sleep. It got dark and he's simply... no matter. I can now enjoy a few moments of peace. Let's go. As expected, no one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands. Or rather, Mother is. 